magandang araw po. Panuurin natin ang bedyong ito na tungkol sa transformer maliit man o malaki. Step down. Step up. At kung ano po ang voltage drop. At current. Pag-aralan po natin. Mga dapat tandaan kung gumagawa ng kuryente. This is a transformer. We find them everywhere. They are essential to our modern lifestyle. They provide the connection between our homes and the electrical power stations. I'm going to show you how they work, why they make this noise, and also how to calculate them in this video, which is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to click the link and join will get a one-month free trial. More about that later. Transformers look something like this. We find them illustrated with symbols like these in electrical drawings. Transformers are simply a device used to transfer electrical energy. It can change the voltage and current in the process, which is very useful. However, they only work with alternating current. They do not work with direct current. Most appliances are rated in watts or kilowatts, but transformers are rated with the units VA for volt amps or even kilovolt amps. We will learn why later on in this video. We can find small transformers used on doorbells or laptop chargers. We have larger versions to supply our homes and businesses. And we also find enormous ones which supply entire regions of towns and even cities. So where have you seen transformers used? Let me know in the comment section down below. There are lots of different ways to construct a transformer. I have some small common examples here, but they are essentially just the same thing. They have two separated coils of wire wrapped around an iron core. The generator or supply is connected to one coil, known as the primary side. And then the load, which is the thing we need to provide power to, is connected to the other coil. And this is known as the secondary side. If I take this one apart, we can see there are simply two separate coils of wire and lots of sheets of iron. That's it. The transformer is just transferring power between the coils. Electricity is dangerous, so do not try this at home unless you are qualified and competent. However, you can use Skillshare from home, and like me, you can follow Marcus Brownlee's very own YouTube Creators course. I've used it to improve my shots for this video, as it's packed with useful tips. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses for us creative people where you can learn everything from improving productivity, business analytics, graphic design, photography, and even web development. I think you're going to really enjoy this. So the first 1,000 people to click the link in the video description and join will get a one month free trial. Do check that out, links down below. Okay, so if we use something called a step up transformer, then we can increase the voltage on the output if we use a step down transformer, then we can decrease the voltage on the output. But why would we want that? Well, the power station might be producing 12,000 volts, but your home needs between 120 and 240 volts. The power station is probably a long distance away, so there's going to be a lot of resistance in the cables, resulting in huge losses of energy on the way. So instead, we use a step up transformer to increase the voltage to around maybe 400,000 volts. Then as we reach the town, we use a step down transformer to reduce this back to around 11,000 volts for local distribution. And then we reduce it again down to around 240 volts for our homes. By increasing the voltage through a transformer, we reduce the current energy loss in a cable depends on the electrical current and the resistance of the cable. If this cable has, for example, 5 ohms of resistance, and we try to send 10 kilowatts through it at 240 volts, we would lose about 87% because the current is high but the voltage is low, and so the losses are huge. But if we were to send this at 400,000 volts, we lose a tiny fraction of just 1% because the current is low. So we can transmit power further and more efficiently at higher voltages. 
As a side note, the reason homes in North America can have either 120 or 240 volts is because they use a three-wire system, where an additional wire is connected to the center of the secondary coil. Therefore, we can use just half of the coil to get 120 volts, or the full coil to get 240 volts. However, most of the world uses around 230 volts, and for this they use just a two-wire system, which is a much simpler design and allows more power to the outlets. And this is useful, for example, to quickly boil a water kettle. By the way, I have covered residential electrical systems previously in great detail. Links down below for that. When we pass an electrical current through a wire, it generates a magnetic field around the wire. If we reverse the direction of current, the magnetic field also reverses. We can see that by placing some compasses around the wire. When we connect an AC generator to a closed loop of wire, the magnetic field inside the generator is going to basically push and pull the electrons in the wire so that they constantly alternate direction between moving forwards and backwards. So the magnetic field is therefore constantly reversing. The voltage is going to vary between its maximum and minimum values because of this. That's why we see a sine wave pattern if we connect an oscilloscope to a power outlet. This pattern repeats 50 or 60 times per second depending on whether it's a 50 or 60 hertz supply. The AC frequency in North America is 60 hertz, but most of the world is just 50 hertz. With a transformer, the frequency we put in is the frequency we get out. We can just increase or decrease the voltage, not the frequency. When we wrap the wire into a coil, this magnetic field becomes even stronger. The wire has to be insulated with an enamel coating to ensure the current flows along the entire length. Otherwise, it will just take the shortest route and it will not work. If we place a second coil of wire in close proximity to the first coil, then the magnetic field will induce a voltage into this second coil because this magnetic field is going to push and pull the electrons in the second coil, forcing them to move. This is therefore a transformer. The same thing happens if we move a magnet past a coil of wire. The magnet will induce a voltage into the coil. The key component here is that the magnetic field is constantly changing polarity as well as intensity. This disturbs the free electrons and causes them to move, and we call this electromotive force. However, this only works with alternating current. It will not work if we connect a direct current supply to the transformer. The flow of electrons will still create a magnetic field around the primary coil, but this will be constant and a fixed polarity and in intensity. So it will not disturb the electrons in the secondary side. The only time it will create an electromotive force using direct current is briefly when the switch is opened and closed because this energizes and de-energizes the magnetic field of the coil. So it is therefore changing. Or alternatively, we could change the voltage because that will also increase and then decrease the magnetic field of the coil. Notice that when I pass a DC current through this transformer, we get a very brief voltage spike as the magnetic field increases and also as it decreases. But if I use an AC supply, we get a constant output voltage because the magnetic field is constantly changing. And that is why we use alternating current. Now, we can just use two separate coils of wire as a transformer. It will work, but not very well. The problem is that we're wasting a lot of the magnetic field because it's not in range of the secondary coil. So we place a ferromagnetic iron core between the coils. This concentrates the magnetic field and guides it to the secondary coil so that the transformer is more efficient. However, this is not a perfect solution. It will result in eddy currents flowing around the core, which will heat up the transformer and therefore wastes energy. To reduce this, the core is made of lots of thin laminated sheets, which restricts the eddy current movements and reduces their effects. 
although we will still lose some of the magnetic field due to leakage flux. And we also get some losses due to the disturbances caused at the joints. We also lose energy in the wire and the coils because they will always have some resistance and this generates heat. So in a transformer, we have copper losses as well as iron losses. The alternating current causes the sheets to expand and contract tiny, tiny amounts, which causes vibrations between the sheets, and this is why we get that humming sound. A step-up transformer works simply by having more turns of wire on the secondary side. This increases the voltage, but it decreases the current. A step-down transformer works by having less turns of wire on the secondary side. This reduces the voltage, but increases the current. Now, this isn't a magical device that produces more energy than it receives. For example, a step-down transformer might receive 240 volts, and it outputs 120 volts. We see that the voltage halves, but the current doubles. If we multiply the voltage and current, we see the same value on each side. This is the volt amp value, which is power, or apparent power. And that has to remain the same. So if the voltage changes, then the current has to change in proportion to maintain the power. So why do transformers use the units of kVA instead of kilowatts? Well, the transformer is just transferring power between the coils. So we use the volt amp unit. The kilowatts depend on what you connect to the transformer. The manufacturer doesn't know what you will connect to the transformer, so they state the total rated apparent power in volt amps. And that's because in AC circuits, the load depends on the true power in kilowatts and the power factor, which is basically efficiency. And this varies depending on the device. Some energy is consumed, but it produces no work. It is just wasted as heat, and we call this reactive power with the units VAR. Power factor is just the ratio of true power and apparent power. If you think of a glass of beer, the liquid beer is the useful stuff. This is your true power in kilowatts. But there is always some foam which is useless. We don't want that. This is the reactive power or the volt amp reactive. You pay for the total volume of the glass, regardless of how much foam and beer is inside. This is your apparent power in volt amps. Now, if you have a good bartender, you will get a little foam and lots of beer for your money. But if you have a bad bartender, then you're going to get lots of foam and not so much beer for your money. The transformer manufacturer is basically saying this transformer can handle a glass this big but it's up to you how much beer and foam you put into that. The less foam you try to pass through, the more beer you can get out. So, the more efficient the devices that you connect, the more things you can power. Transformers are also often used in rectifier circuits to convert alternating current into direct current. The transformer first reduces the voltage, and then some diodes convert this into a rough direct current. A capacitor then smooths this out into a nice, clean power supply. You can learn how that works in detail in our previous video. Links down below for that. Let's run some basic calculations for transformers, assuming it is perfect with no losses. If we had a transformer with 1000 turns on the primary and 100 turns on the secondary, and we supplied it with 120 volts, what voltage would we see on the secondary side? We can use this formula to find that out, and we see the answer is 12 volts. So this is a step down transformer. What if we only knew the output voltage and the amount of turns? Well, we could find the input voltage using this formula, and if we input the values, we get this answer. If we wanted to find the number of turns on the secondary side, and we knew the voltages and primary turns, then we could use this formula to get our answer. If we wanted to find the number of turns on the primary side, we could use this formula, and this will give us the answer. If we had a current of 1.2 amps on the secondary, then we find the primary current using this formula, and we see the answer is 0.12 amps. We could also find the answer if we knew the secondary current and both voltages by using this formula. 
If we knew the current on the primary side and the voltages of the primary and secondary, we could find the secondary current using this formula. Or we could also find the answer by using this formula. We then check that the power is the same on both sides of the transformer by multiplying the voltage and current. Let's now consider some step up transformer examples. If we had 100 turns on the primary and 200 on the secondary, and we supplied it with 120 volts, what voltage would we see on the secondary? Well, we can use this formula to find that out. So we see the answer is 240 volts. So this is therefore a step up transformer. What if we only knew the output voltage and the amount of turns? Well, we could find the input voltage with this formula. If we wanted to find the number of turns on the secondary side, and we knew the voltage and primary turns, then we could use this formula. If we wanted to find the number of turns on the primary, then we could use this formula. If we had a current of 1 amps on the secondary, then we find the primary current by using this formula. And we see the answer is 2 amps. We could also find the answer if we knew the secondary current and both voltages by using this formula. If we knew the current on the primary side and the voltage of the primary and secondary, we could find the secondary current by using this formula. Or we could also find the answer by using this formula if we knew the number of turns. And then we check the power is the same on both sides of the transformer by multiplying the voltage and current. Check out one of these videos to continue learning about electrical engineering and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, as well as theengineeringmindset.com. Magandang araw po mga kabayan. Uh, andito na naman po ang uh, inyong lingkod. Uh, at sa pagkakataong ito, uh, gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo uh, ang uh, overview ng uh, distribution transformer. Uh, maganda po ito kasi kailangan din nating malaman ang, uh, ang uh, connection at saka yung mga Uh, system voltages na ibinibigay sa atin ng uh, power utility company uh, doon para doon sa mga bahay, sa mga commercial establishment, industrial buildings na kung saan tayo ay uh, nag install ng uh, uh, electricals so magsimula na po tayo Gusto ko po sanang uh, ipakita sa inyo yung mga sample photos ng mga transformer na ginagamit natin o ginagamit ng mga power utility companies. Uh, minsan ginagamit din ito ng uh, uh, ginagamit din sa loob ng mga buildings. Kasi pagka yung building po minsan malaki, uh, meron pong sariling substation na sa loob. Uh, ito po muna, itong ganitong klaseng transformer po ito po ay is uh, uh, all mounted transformer yung ganito pong klase kung makikita nyo po uh, yung kanyang dalawang high voltage terminals ito po at saka ito dito po kinoconnect yung uh, uh, primary primary uh, uh, wires na manggagaling sa power utility company tapos dito naman po itong terminal na ito, itong secondary ito po ang intention nito, kaya tatlo ito tatlong single phase po iko-connect siya magiging transformer bank siya magiging 3 phase connection ito po ang insulation po nito uh, ay oil oil uh, immersed type po ito uh, meron po siyang langis sa loob uh, yun po ang nagsisilbing uh, cooling cooling system niya kasi habang ginagamit po umiinit eh ito naman pong isang ito uh, ito po is uh, transformer din siya kaya lang po ito ay 3 phase na siya kaagad 3 uh, phase na tapos uh, oil immersed transformer din ito mayroon din siyang langis sa loob na nagiging uh, 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 parang uh, sa cooling system niya 
Ito po sa taas yung uh, uh, tanke ng langis. Yan po. Tapos ito po yung uh, cooling fins. Kapag uh, ito po nakakatulong din to para lumamig yung mga uh, yung langis nag para pong radiator ito. Ito naman po. Ito naman oh, ganun din yung sample natin kanina. Uh, ang intention po nito is uh, for uh, uh, transformer bank, 3-phase connection. Kung mapapansin po natin, meron din cooling fins sa gilid. Dadaan din po rito yung langis uh, para po mas madaling lumamig. Ito po. Ito po, po, ito po yung isang klase naman ng uh, transformer din na kung saan is uh, 3-phase din siya. Mas maliit po ito. Ito po pwede pwedeng uh, i-mount sa poste. Ito. By the way, nga po pala ito pole mounted siya. Ito naman po, pound mounted, mayroon pong foundation ito. Uh, sa ibaba lang po ikinakabit ito. Hindi sa poste. Ito po, pole mounted din sa poste. Uh, ito naman po, kung saan to, pole mounted din to. Uh, single face naman siya, pang single face. Usually po, uh, ini-install to sa mga mga tawag dito sa mga streets na kung saan ang uh, uh, ang susuplayan nito ay uh, yung mga uh, na, kabahayan na gaya ito po uh, single phase to ang, ang rating niya nandiyan naman na 25 kBA ito yung high voltage boosting niya oh, itong dalawa yung dalawa oh. ibig sabihin yan line to line yan line, line to line connection na magiging primary yan ito naman ang secondary niya. Ito naman isang ito, ganun din siya, bali pole mounted transformer din siya, single phase. Kaya lang po kung mapapansin niyo, isa lang ang kanyang high voltage bushing. Ang intention po nito, uh, line to neutral po ito magiging primary. Yung neutral po kasi hindi wala nang high voltage bushing yun eh. Hindi din lalagyan. So magiging line neutral po ito. Ito naman po yung secondary uh, niya, secondary uh, terminals niya para sa distribution. Nga pala po pala itong mga ganitong klaseng transformer ito, ito 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 at saka ito saka ito lahat, lahat na yan uh, pwedeng kuha niyan, pwedeng uh, outdoor, outdoor uh, installation pwede sa labas yan ng bahay pero itong dalawang ito ito naman, pwede rin sa loob ginagamit din ito ito, lalo na ito, ginagamit sa indoor to indoor uh, na substation ito, ganun din o, ito naman yung sample natin ng mga dry type uh, transformer, ito 3-phase oh. na ito ito, ito yung uh, ito, kumbaga, pagka tinanggal mo yung kaha niya ito mangyayari, 3-phase oh. oh. 1, 2, 3 o tatlong single phase, three phase usually ini-install to sa mga loob ng buildings no? mga electrical rooms ayan o, no? pati ito ang cooling system po nito cool lang po, hangin lang po eh. kung mapapansin nyo, meron siya luber dito dito, dito papasok yung hangin air cooled lang po ito ayan po tapos ito na po yung mga samples kapag ka naka-install na o ito o Oh, ito na yung 3-phase natin na pole mounted transformer ito naman na yung uh, uh, ano to, isang buo na transformer din to, yung maliit lang pero pole mounted din siya ito single phase naman ito 3-phase ito naman po yung transformer out na pad mounted ito po kung ano ito sa substation na to outdoor type uh, substation Tapos, ito na po. Dito na tayo sa indoor. Kaya po nang nasabi ko kanina, ito po, pwede rin install sa loob. Nasa loob siya ng uh, uh, indoor uh, substation, yung ganitong classic transformer, malalaking capacity. Ito naman, nasa loob siya ng electrical room, oh. Ito. Yung connection niya dito sa panel board na ito. Saka ito rin, oh, sa electrical room rin. Ito, dry type transformer. Air-cold lang po. Air-cold uh, din po yan. Ito. 
Pag-aralan po nating bahagya ang uh, single phase transformer. Uh, sa three phase po hindi na natin i-discuss to kasi halos ganoon din naman po ang kanyang uh, uh, prinsipyo o principles. So at least para lang medyo maintindihan natin ng konti. <clears throat> so ito po ang uh, symbol ng uh, transformer. Meron po siyang uh, tatlong parts. Yung una po, yung kanyang uh, uh, tawag dito, high voltage uh, winding ito. Meron siyang uh, tawag dito, ang kanyang terminal is H1 at H2. Yung pangalawang po naman, uh, yung kanyang uh, low voltage winding. Ito naman po yun. Ang kanyang terminal ay X1 at X2. Ito naman po nasa gitna. Ito po yung transformer core. So, bali po yung, yung uh, uh, low voltage winding ay uh, isolated sa uh, high voltage winding. Uh, ito po uh, magsample po tayo ng single phase step down transformer ang ibig sabihin po ng step down ay ibababa natin yung voltahe ang magiging power source po ay mas mataas na voltahe i-step down natin siya sa mababang voltahe pagka ganun po yung, hal yung high voltage winding yun ang magiging primary side kasi yung primary side yun lagi yung power source so, yung secondary yung low voltage winding naman yun ang magiging secondary side na kung, na kung saan doon ikakabit yung mga loads na dito na yung mga uh, papunta na to ng mga uh, kung ano man yung load halimbawa susupply na ng kuryente yung mga kabahayan dito na yan sa, dito na ikakonek yan sa secondary side o load side ng uh, uh, transformer ito naman pagka step up naman step up transformer so ibig sabihin naman yung uh, yung voltahe is uh, yung step up mababa siya itataas natin siya. Usually, ginagamit ito sa mga uh, power plants. Mag-generate sila ng uh, power, mababa ang voltahe, tapos sa uh, uh, dadaan nyo na switchyard, may mga transformer doon na step up. Pagka mataas na yung voltahe, uh, dadaan na yung kuryente sa transmission line. Ganun po. So, kung ganun ang mangyayari, kung step up tayo, ang magiging primary side natin o power source natin ay yung low voltage winding ito na po, yung X1 and X2 terminal yung secondary side natin papuntang load o transmission line na yung H1 o H2 kasi mataas na po ang voltage dyan ito na po yung uh, magiging uh, set up ng single phase step down distribution transformer na uh, ini-install ng mga power utility company para para gamitin pang supply ng uh, kuryente uh, sa mga consumer so dito po sa example natin, dito sa primary side dito po ang kanilang supply so halimbawa po 13.2 kb Oh, ito po ang H1 at H2 yung terminal niya dito ito connect so step down po ito at dito po sa secondary side o load side na is 240, 240 volts na po ayan po so, pwede na pong gamitin ito ng uh, mga consumer so, pag sinukatan pag nga po po pula itong uh, X2 terminal po pag ikinamit natin yan sa ground o sa ground terminal so o sa 
uh, ground rod ito po ay magiging neutral so ang magiging service po nito is line to neutral na line to neutral kadalasan po ganito ang ginagamit sa mga rural areas so line to neutral voltage is equal to 240 volts ganyan na po ito naman po yung uh, isang example uh, ganun din po kaya lang po itong X2 hindi po nakakonekta sa ground meron pong ibang connection ng ground so pagka ganito po at yung isang terminal ng secondary ay hindi natin ikonekta sa ground magiging line to line po yon line to line service yon yan po so Line to line voltage is equal to 240 volts. Marami po nagtatanong bakit 240 volts ang ginawa kong example. Uh, ganyan po talaga yan. Minsan 230 volts pa nga ang binibigay. Although 220 ang uh, uh, yung mga appliances natin. Kasi po minsan yung transformer malayo naman yon sa kinaroroonan ng bahay natin. Uh, Doon po sa terminal ng transformer 240 volts po yon. Pero habang lumalayo po Dahil dumadaan ng uh, uh, voltahe, kuryente sa linya, may voltage drop po. Kaya po, minsan, lalo na pagka malayo tayo dun sa transformer, pagka nasa dulo tayo, minsan ang voltahe na lang is, minsan nga, 200 to 210 volts na lang. Mas maganda po yung mas mataas na voltahe ang ibibigay nila para po pagdating sa atin is, eh, maayos na po yung voltahe, minsan 220 na eksakto, 230, ganyan, 215 Ayan. Dito naman po tayo sa uh, three phase transformer YY YY connection. So, ganoon din po, parang single phase lang din po. Uh, pagka step down po yung primary side, yung primary side nito, ito ang magiging source. Dahil ito ito ang uh, high voltage winding eh. Dito naman po ang low voltage winding. So ang secondary, ito naman po ang pupuntang load. Yan po eh, step down. Step down transformer. So, ganun din po. Pa, yung kanyang uh, uh, tagging sa terminals ay parehas din po ng single phase H1, H2. H1, H2. H1, H2. Tatlong single phase. Tatlong, kung lang po yan, tatlong single phase transformer. Magkakahiwalay siya. Ayun, pagka kinonect na natin yan, ito na siya. O, halimbawa, step down, ano? O, yung H1, andun pa rin, yung connection sa gitna, magiging neutral na yon, Neutral. So, ganun din. X1, 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 tapos yung gitna, neutral. So, halimbawa, ang uh, uh, supply natin is 34.5 kb. Ito. So, Halimbawa rin, ang line to neutral voltage natin ay 240 volts. Ibig sabihin, yung line 1 at line at neutral, pag sinukata mo ng voltahe, is 240 volts. Line 2 at neutral, 240 volts. Line 3 at neutral, 240 volts. Ibig sabihin po, yan po na yung isusupply sa mga, na, sa mga consumer na. Pwede yung line 1 at neutral, sa kabilang straight. Line 2 at neutral, kabilang street, line 3 line 3 at neutral, sa kabilang street, or may purok, pwede yung line 1 neutral, dun sa isang purok o line line, one, line line 2 neutral, sa isang barangay, ganun, line 3 neutral, sa isang purok naman, ganun, hati-hati po, pagka ang line 2 neutral po ay 240 volts ang line to line po, voltage nyan ay 415 volts so, although wala naman paggagamitan ito, kasi ito intended lang naman para sa uh, 240 volts na utilization voltage Pag sinabi pong line to line voltage Pag sinukatan po natin yung line 1 at line 2 Makukuha po natin 415 volts Line 2, line 3 uh, 415 volts Line 1, line 3 415 volts Ang formula po niyan ay Pagka Y connection po uh, Ang line to line voltage is equal to Line to, line to neutral voltage Times square root of 3 Ganun po so, tapos po, pagka Y po ang secondary natin, dapat po yung neutral, ikinakonekta sa ground para po ma-stabilize ang voltahe. 
Dahil pagka floating neutral po, <clears throat> minsan ang balance load, yung, yung voltahe po niyan, hindi uh, uh, magiging pare-parehas. Kung halimbawa po, wala, walang ground yan, minsan makakakuha ka niya ng 200 volts, 180, gano'n. Pero po kung uh, kung yan, kung nakakonekta po sa ground yan, yan po ang magsisilbing voltage stabilizer. Dito naman po tayo sa 3-phase uh, Delta. Ganon din po oh, yung mga transformer ter terminals. Hindi na bago kaya lang yung arrangement uh, magbabago. Pagka Delta po uh, yung pagka Delta po natin ang magiging connection po niyan yung H1 kukonekta sa H2. Ganon lang po yung H1 connection sa H2. Sa secondary po yung X1 sa X2 connection. Ito po. Ito po. Ayan. So, yung X1 po napalitan na ng uh, yung yung isa po, yung isang yung connection po napalitan na ng line 1, line 2, line 3. Dito line 1, line 2, line 3 rin. So ito po ang delta delta. Ito po halimbawa po ang line to line to line voltage natin is 34.5 sa primary dahil ito ang source. So ito ang uh, ating high voltage winding. Sa low voltage winding naman ito ang ating secondary side. Ito na ang uh, pupuntang uh, Uh, loads o sa mga consumer natin So Ang line to line voltage natin halimbawa is 240 volts Kapag ka ganyan yan Line 1, line 2 Pag sinukata mo ng voltahe, 240 Line 2, line 3, 240 Line 1, line 3, 240 Yung ground po Wala pong connection yan Hindi po nakakonek sa any windings ng transformer Separate po yan Yung ibinibigay na ground Pag ka ganito po ang service Ah uh, Line to line po ito Line to line Kadarasan ginagamit po ito sa mga uh, urban area Sa mga syudad Yung kaninang white Yung kaninang Y Y connection Para sa line to neutral naman yon Intended po naman yon sa rural areas So Yun lang po Sa 3-phase uh, transformer connection po uh, Hindi lang po Uh, y, Y at Delta, Delta ang connection Pwede rin pong Delta, Y Y, Delta Ganyan So, depende po Sa uh, uh, Power Utility Company So, nag-sample lang po tayo Para at least natin alam natin yung Y, Y, Delta, Delta So, summary po natin Yung uh, pinag-usapan po natin Sabi po natin Uh, dun sa single phase transformer kanina uh, yung secondary niya no, halimbawa uh, ang voltahe natin is uh, 240 volts na o sa yung yung uh, load side ng uh, transformer pagka yung isang linya po is connect natin sa ground ibig sabihin po magiging line to neutral yung uh, yung connection doon pagka hindi naman po natin connect sa sa ground yung neutral line to line po ang magiging connection noon doon po naman doon po naman sa three phase kapag ka y connection po ang secondary natin papuntang load ah uh, yun po ang line to neutral na uh, service uh, na gagamitin na kung saan yung neutral ay nakakonekta sa ground kapag ka naman po delta ang utilization voltage naman po na ibibigay sa atin is line to line naman wala po siyang uh, neutral tapos yung ground separate connection hindi siya nakakabit sa uh, any uh, winding ng transformer so yun lang po sana po uh, may natutunan kayo maski konti dito sa ating uh, discussion tungkol sa transformer ito po Hapyaw lang po ito kung uh, pag-aaralan po natin ng transformer. Marami pa po yan. Marami po po may mga tinatawag yan na transformer polarity. Ayan, ganyan. Maraming topic po. Ito lang po sa atin para at least malaman lang natin yung uh, uh, basic ng uh, transformer. So, kung nagustuhan nyo po, sana naman po i-like nyo itong uh, YouTube channel ko. Pagkatapos, i- subscribe subscribe yun na rin uh, 
Uh, pagka hindi nyo po naintindihan, ay uh, pwede naman po kayong mag-comment at uh, sasagutin ko naman po. Salamat po sa uh, pakikinig nyo.